not great, not pretty, but we did it. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I'm Amy. Today I have a book haul for you guys. A large, large majority of these books I purchased at the little library sale section of my local library, which is a weakness of mine, but my husband doesn't mind because I have about 15 books here that I bought for less than $12 altogether upon several trips. I didn't buy 15 books at one time, although that makes it sound like I'd never do that and I would totally do that. But I do have a few other books from other places, but I will mention where I got those when we get to them. There's a lot of books to get through, so let's go ahead and get to it. The first book that I have for you guys is Red Rising by Pierce Brown. Shout out to Mike and Becca from Books and Look, hashtag Mike for Red Rising. This is a dystopian sci-fi book that is the first in a trilogy, all three of which have been published already, and this book is very well loved around the booktube community, and I think it's time for me to pick it up. It sounds wonderful. I do enjoy a good dystopian novel, so when I saw it for 50 cents at the library, I was like, yeah, that's a no-brainer. And I also got a book that I am so intrigued about, and I hope that I get to it soon, and that is American Wife by Curtis Sittenfeld. This is the story about a woman who in the 1960s get, gets married to a boy from a very affluent Republican family, and he goes on to become governor, and from there he becomes the president of the United States. And despite how much she loves this man, she does not agree with his politics or the things that he believes in, and that sounds fascinating to me. So this is about her trying to come to terms with the fact that her public persona is very different from her personal one. And that sounds great. I love it when an author or a person can discuss relationships in which people love each other dearly, but they don't have to agree. Or in this case, he may not know. I don't know. I'm just, I'm here for that discussion on relationships and how that can work and how it can play out. So this sounds so good to me. If you guys have read this book or have heard anything about it, please let me know. I'd love to know what your thoughts on it were. And I have another historical fiction book. There's a few of these in here. Go figure. And this is The Winter of the World by Carol Ann Lee. This book takes place after the Great War or World War One, and it follows specifically a journalist named Alex Dyer who is just trying to deal with what he saw reporting on the war and the trench warfare and the atrocities that he saw and also with the fact that he's in love with his best friend's wife. Now it is not clear whether or not his wife, not his wife, his friend is alive or not but I haven't read a lot about World War One, and I'd like to and it just sounded like a good read so I picked that one up. This book that I have is a very popular one and I'm super excited to read it. I'm super excited to read all of these, I should stop saying that, is A Tale for the Time Being by Ruth Ozeki. This is a very popular book that is still being talked about despite the fact that this book was published two years ago. So that's saying something to me. And this is about a woman who finds um, after the aftermath of the giant tsunami in 2011 in Japan, a lunchbox that washes up washes up on shore in the Pacific Northwest in which she finds a young girl's diary and she becomes immersed in it and what happened to this girl. And then the other character is the girl who is writing this diary who is struggling with mental health and thinking that she wants to end it all but first she wants to tell the story of a great grandmother who was a monk, I think? Is that right? I don't know. Anyway, this cover is gorgeous. I've heard wonderful things about this book and it's just time that I got around to reading it. And another well-loved booktube book, at least from what I've seen, is The Light Between Oceans by M. L. Stedman. This is the story about a couple who take care of a lighthouse on a remote island where they are the only ones on this island and they are currently struggling to have a child. And when a infant washes up on shore with a dead person in a boat, they decide to take the child on as their own. And this book is about the ramifications of that when they move back to the mainland and learn that this child's mother is still alive. Sounds very interesting. It's been spoiled for me a little bit, which is disappointing, but I'm really looking forward to getting to that one as well. I'm not going to describe this book because frankly, I really don't know what it's about. All I know is that it's got a lot of awards and people love this author. And that is Donna Tartt's The Goldfinch. Bought it for a dollar. 
I figured why not. I have not read any of Donna Tart. If you guys feel like there's a better place to start with her that's not the Goldfinch, let me know. I'm all for advice because I know she's a big, well-loved author and I'd like to approach her in a way that is going to most increase the possibility that I'm going to like what she has to say. And a classic that I have already read and chatted about in my September wrap-up. I will link that up here for you guys. Is that the right way? I think so. Uh, that is Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury. It's about a fireman whose job is to burn books. That's all I'm going to say. It's a classic. If you haven't read it, you should read it. I'm trying to get through this fast. Sorry if this is so fast, but there's a lot of books to get through and Lord knows we, I get chatty from time to time. Uh, and this book is The Last Days of Night by Graham Moore. This is a book that is mainly from the point of view of a lawyer who is representing George Westinghouse, who is being sued by Thomas Edison. And this is taking place in 1893 when there was this race to figure out electricity. So there's characters in this book like obviously Thomas Edison, George Westinghouse, Nikola Tesla, who I am all about Nikola, Te Nikola Tesla. So much respect for that person. There's a documentary on Netflix about Nikola Tesla. You should go watch it. Look around your house. If something is really important that you couldn't live without is there, it's probably because of Nikola Tesla. Just saying. But sounds really interesting and drama and conflict and I'm hoping atmospheric. I mean, it's called The Last Days of Night. It just, it sounds good. It sounds good. And for 50 cents, if it sounds good, I'm probably gonna buy it. Uh, and this is Deception on Sable Hill, a Chicago World's Fair Mystery by Shelley Gray. This is the second book in a series. I'm so good at that. I am so very good at that. And I don't read books out of order because I don't want to be spoiled for any itty bitty thing and that's just a thing for me. I just don't read books out of order. But it's a romance a little bit. It's a historical fiction taking place in 1893. There's mystery. I don't read a lot of mysteries not for really much of a particular reason other than I don't typically grad gra gravitate, gravitate towards them. So I'd like to get my hands on the first one and it just sounds like a good cozy read and we're here for the cozy reads because it's fall. Right? Am I right? Uh, and another cozy read that I largely picked up this book. It totally interests me otherwise I wouldn't have picked it up but I was totally driven to actually pay the whole whopping 50 cents for it uh, because I knew this would be the perfect fall read, the colors on the front and everything. This is The Hundred Year House by Rebecca Mackay and this is the story about a couple who is living in this house that I believe it's the wife's family has lived in for a very long time and supposedly her great mother committed great great mother great grandmother. I need to slow down. I know I'm trying to go fast but take a breath Amy. Slow down. Her great-grandmother committed suicide in the house and her husband, who is an academic, decides to do a little bit of research in this house because it's an old house. And in doing research about this house, he finds out all these secrets and these isms about this family and about this house. And you get to go back in history to learn about them. And it just sounds great. My husband is waving at me because apparently he can't tell that I'm filming. So... I'll be right back. Just give me a second. Shall we continue since my husband is incapable of waiting for me to finish filming this video? Uh, another book that I managed to pick up was Go Set a Watchman by Harper Lee. I adored To Kill a Mockingbird when I read it in high school. It is a book that has resonated with me and stayed with me for a very long time. So it's been a while since I was in high school and I need to reread it and I would like to reread it before I get to this just to refresh my memory and everything. But this is about Scout when she's grown and she returns to her hometown because I believe Atticus is dying or coming to the end. And I know this wasn't as loved as everyone was hoping it to be, but I still would like to give it a shot. Uh, so I picked that one up. And also, I got a book that I probably checked out from the library as a young adult slash tween young teenager dozens of times but for whatever reason never read and when I saw it for only 25 cents I was like you know what we're gonna add it to my collection and if I never read it that's okay but I would like to read it still because it is such a monumental book for that time frame and that is Are You There God? It's Me Margaret by Judy Bloom. I'm not going to describe this book because I think we all know that it's just about a young girl growing up and struggling with that. And like I said, checked this book out so many times and never read it. And maybe I should just read it. So 
I picked that one up. And another middle grade book that I got that I remember loving as a kid is Island of the Ants by Ava Ibotson. And this is just a crazy fun story about these women who take care of all these mythical creatures on this island and they have to kidnap children to help them take care of it, which sounds really dark and sinister. But I just remember this book being a lot of fun. And again, only 25 cents. And I'd like to visit it again because every now and then you just need a good, fun middle grade book. And I remember that being exactly what this is. And I also got a board book because I love board books because I'm a preschool teacher probably. Well, that's probably not the reason why, but I just love board books. And this one is Gus by Oliver uh, Danrea, I'm gonna say. And this is about a little duck who helps hatch some turtle eggs, even though he doesn't like to hang out with people. But then he decides that the turtles are okay. So he hangs out with his turtles and he has a pot on his head and it's just cute. And I liked it, so I bought it. Uh, another book that I bought that I have read, I will, I think that was in the same wrap up as Fahrenheit 451. And this is Girl in Hyacinth Blue by Susan Vreeland. This is all about a alleged Vermeer painting that has not been authenticated and it follows back in time each person who owned the pin painting or had possession of the painting, which is interesting, but so much potential, but it was just a miss for me. I think I gave it two out of five stars. So not the best book. I probably wouldn't recommend it. It was just meh. It was fine. But if you're really interested in Vermeer, then maybe this might be a book for you. I also picked up a proof copy of Murakami's Men Without Women, a short story collection. I have not read any Murakami, so I figured that maybe a short story collection of his might be a good place to start, even though this is one of his most recent works. If you guys think I should start elsewhere, uh, let me know. I'm kind of new to him. I know he's a big deal. I know he's written a ton of books. I know people love his writing, but I really don't know where to start. But when this was only 50 cents, I figured that it wouldn't be bad to add and I don't, it doesn't bother me that it's a proof copy. So I picked that one up. And those were the last of the books that I got at the library. As I mentioned, I mean, I really can't complain picking up all those books, all of which I sound wonderful to me and I'm really excited to read. But I ha did pick up a few books from my local used bookstore and then one book with the remainder of my birthday gift card money from Barnes and Noble. And I'll mention that one when I get to it. But the first one that I picked up was Tamara Pierce's M Magic Steps, which is the first book in the Magic Opens uh, quartet, which takes place after the Circle of Magic series. I have just, for whatever reason, I don't have all of the books because I think when I was growing up, I checked a lot of them out from the library repeatedly to read them repeatedly. So I'm just trying to fill my collection with the versions that I read. I don't know if anybody else is like that, but I like to own the versions or editions of the books that I read when I was a kid. So this was one of them. This is about Sandry's student. And I also picked up Anthony Mara's novel, uh, A Constellation of Vital Phenomena. This was his debut novel and his first work that he had published. As a lot of you probably know, I absolutely adore adored The Czar of Love and Techno, and I think it's just time to read this. I love the Russian setting, which this also has. So I'm really, really looking forward to it. I just know that it's about a young girl who loses her family and then someone takes her in and takes her to a hospital and that's about all that I know. That's not a lot, but that's all I need to know because his writing was gorgeous. And I also got for the month of October, so I plan on reading this this month, and that is Practical Magic by Alice Hoffman. And this is about two sisters who are whispered to be witches, even though they feel like they're not, and they eventually escape when they're all grown, but they come back. And who doesn't want witches and magic and a really awesome, cool cover for October for a nice cozy read. And this book I picked up for 10 cents. So this is like the deal of the century. And that is the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Society by Mary Ann Schaefer and Annie Barrows. This is a book that's told largely through letters and taking place in the 1940s, I believe. All That's about all that I know about it. And I just heard amazing things about this. This is a bit of an older book, but I've heard this is a book for people who love books. And I'm always here for a book that loves books. Or a book about books? A book about books. 
And the last book that I got, I picked up from Barnes & Noble, so it only cost me $4, which is great because between my little membership card, which is awesome, and my gift card, I got a good little deal out of it. And that is My Lady Jane by let's see here, Cynthia Hand, Brody Ashton, and Jody Meadows. And this is a reimagined story of Lady Jane Grey, who was queen of England for nine days before she got her head chopped off. And there's a little bit of magic in this, which I'm absolutely loving. I'm currently reading it right now. I don't think I mentioned that. I'm about 140 pages in, and it is a barrel of fun. It is a YA novel. And it's just great. I'm loving it right now. Obviously, I'm just in the beginning, but I don't anticipate disliking it anytime soon. It's just a great fun read and you will probably hear more about it in my wrap up. There are the books that I've picked up in the last few months, which I say for the last eight weeks or so isn't bad. I have ordered a few books online recently, so they are not included in this because they are in the mail, but I say not bad, but thank you so much for watching, you guys. If you've read any of these books, let me know what your thoughts were, or if you're interested in reading in any, reading in any of them, reading any of them, let me know that as well. Or if you think that there's a book in this that reminds you of another book that you think I would like, I'm always here to make my TBR bigger because we can't ever run out of books on a TBR. So if you like this video, please like it. And if you loved it, please subscribe. And we will see you in my next video. Happy reading. A famous sequel to a kill to Why is this so hard? It's like the 16th time I've tried to do this. I haven't filmed in over a week and I am on the struggle bus. Chew, chew. You know what? I don't even know what I'm saying. Manage a thumbnail with this. There's so many books. There's so many big books. I like big books. I cannot lie. That was terrible. <laughs> Before I haven't dropped any. Oh man. Oh man. Oh, I did it.